we go live. Okay, we're live, good stuff. G'day, how you going? Annapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to me live tutorial here on my YouTube channel. If it's your first time here, don't be shy, be sh sure to share, like and subscribe to my channel. And within no time at all, you'll be painting like a bloody champion, all right? Now I wanna bring you over here and um, show you what I'm gonna do today. Before I do that, I just need to get a few things going up here, <clears throat> excuse me, so as I can, um, I just wanna put the links in the description below because there's a few links there and they're very vital to my channel. Uh, so whenever you've got time, either during or after the video, you can go and check out the links, paste that there, and I'll save that there. Okay, I've just took a photo of me pencil and some gloves there just for the thumbnail there, something different to break it up, because we're gonna paint some kind of water, rock, sky, mountain scene here. So it's gonna be fantastic. Now I'll bring the video live so I can see what if there's any um, people in the room yet. There's 24 people watching there. All right, so just let me do a quick sound check. Oh, lovely, the sound's working good, isn't it? So who we got here, Rocky88, get a Rocky88, there you go. We got Rocky88, we got Mona, we've got Christine. Uh, is it Michael or Michelle? Uh, oh, Michelle, get a Michelle, how you going? Michelle Dobrognos, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce your name, eh? Uh, we've got Diane, Judith, Peggy, Teresa, Lucy, 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 Lucy. Uh, we've got Maestro and Deb and Anu and Judy, Jude, Judy. All right, there's not going to be too much question and answers here. This is a live tutorial and I've got a uh, 30 by 42 centimetre canvas here or it's a 12 by 16 inch canvas for those who want to know inches. So I'm going to bring you over here without further ado. But before we do do the further ado, I'd just like to get some paint onto the canvas there. Oh no, first I'll just show you what I'm going to paint today, okay? So we've got a canvas there. I started drawing it out and I thought, nah, bugger it, I'll show you what I'm going to draw. So I've got a horizon line here. I'll take the cap off my pencil there. I've got a horizon line here, but it's a staggered horizon line, okay? It's level, but staggered, okay? Don't ever bring them around if you can help it, because it makes your paintings look like snot when you do stuff like that. All right, now I'm going to have a bit of a, uh, what do you call it? Some kind of, always come down, some kind of, this is out up in the hills and sort of stuff, coming up there like that. And then it's going to have some more, maybe some grass and stuff here like that. All right. And then we're going to have some some kind of mountains. Nothing too massive though, just some, some rocky, not mountains, but rocks. See how I'm coming off the painting like this, off the painting and up like that. I'm not coming this way. It always makes your paintings look a bit weird when you do that, okay? We might have some some um, submerged rocks here, and we're gonna have some water coming down here as well, and we're gonna have a sky. Do you want a warm sky? Do you want a cool sky? Let me know now before I get started. I'm gonna prime up the canvas with the Flow White and the Retarder for a start. Funny pencil, it's a bloody big pencil in the day. Okay, okay, so a warm sky or a cool sky? Cool sky, says Brenda Martis. All right, yeah, I wouldn't, I was sort of hoping a cool sky. So see here, I don't really want all this retarded because when you put your retarder and flow white and blend a beautiful sky, Oh, Bernard's gone. Um, and then you dry it, and then you're painting on top of it, it can lift. So I'm only going to do this bit here. So let's get some tape over me so-called mountains or hills, rocks. They're like a big stony rock type of formation there, okay? I'll detail them a bit better, but I just putting this there so we don't get all that 
retarded paint underneath it, okay? Now you at home can take your time with something like this. You're not sort of under the pump like I am. I always feel I'm under the pump. I don't know why. I suppose it's just the pressure I put on myself. Now there's my sky footprint, okay? Watch how I do the sky. You can use this tutorial just to learn how to do a basic, simple sky. We're gonna do a cool sky. As I asked somebody and somebody answered straight away, which was, um, oh, there's another one, Diane as well said cool sky. Judith said warm sky, but the first one was um, a cool sky, so I'm going with cool. Now, what do we need? Look at all the rubbish down here. Let me get rid of some of that. Um, need some flow white paint and some retarder, okay? Okay, so come over to my palette here. Now I don't have much of a big sky, but this is always the primer underneath my skies, the magic behind my skies, okay? So watch this. It's a cool, it's a cool average day here today. That's how much craft paint I use, student paint, poster paint, and the amount of um, retarder. Retarder is what slows down the drying time. So I'm gonna mix these up now with my brush because I want it in the brush while I'm mixing. You can use a knife if you want, but knives scare me. So we haven't got much there because it's not a very big sky. And we're going to bring all the painting forward as we go. Love your paintings, your tube storage system. Oh, yes, oh, hanging on the board there. Have a look at that. I've just paper clip screws, blackboard. All right, come over here. All right. There we go. Now we'll get this sky. Nothing's wet, nothing's nothing. I've just mixed this up onto the a Gesso Prime canvas, an artist quality canvas this is. It's a pretty good quality canvas. It's a nice toothed canvas. So I'm pretty much picking all that paint up. There's bugger all left on my palette now. Now I'll stroke it left and right, left and right, left and right. Just to get that beautiful lines in there, okay? Done. Now I'm just going to wipe this brush. I just need to wipe it. I don't need to wash it. And so what did we say? We're going to have a cool sky. Cool sky is an easy sky because there's not many colours there. Now a lot of you that follow me know I love using cerulean blue and a little bit of realism in there. See, sometimes you can even put two tubes onto the one clip. Okay. Come down here. So we'll get our sky colour, which is cerulean blue. Beautiful, a realistic looking blue sky. Okay, and we just want a little, little bit of um, quinacridone magenta. I love this just for a little, look at that, not much at all. Okay, I'll put the lid on that one. Now the paint here, no retarder in these. The retarder's all in that stuff up onto the canvas there. So we get some of this. And I'm going to start at the top of the canvas just with this cerulean blue. This is a really good artist quality paint that I'm using. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so I'm going to start at the top. Crisscross it into that white paint that's on there. And now bring it down. And if anything, I want it lighter at the bottom, which is what we got. Get the paint into your canvas and now stroke it, stroke it left and right. There we go. Beauty nuke. Too easy, eh? Practice is the key behind easy paintings. A lot of people say, Ian, you make it look easy. That's just because I've done a lot of practice. Now I'm pulling that out. Why I pulled it out is because the length of my brush, I just want a bit on there. Just like so. Just to get a bit of warmth in my sky. A bit of, not warmth, but a bit of um, realism. So we'll go from about the bottom here, right there, get it at the bottom, mix it with that blue, and then start 
crisscrossing it up into that blue so it's not a band we don't want a band of that color there this is just that hazy polluted color there now we can gently stroke that all right that's our sky done this has got to be very minimal you put that on too heavy you'll learn by the more paintings you do it'll be too too dark it brought it dries very dark now back over here we're just going to wash that brush because I need it clean give me a comment below if you want to ask me any questions about my paintings I've just got a flapping bucket here just something to give it a severe flogging in just so as it gets all that water off all right back over here I'm an idiot because I should have got the paints there we go we'll grab some here I've got titanium white I want to put some clouds in just a simple sky I mean where are we and I want a couple of fan brushes so I want a, a small one and a large one now these are hog bristle fan brushes they stay together when they're wet and we want to put some clouds in the sky and also we want a few brushes so I've got a couple here um, and I go by the size of the cloud how big I'm going to use my blending brush so I'm going to use probably those two there they're nice and flat on the bottom and they're sturdy and they're soft they're not scratchy all right come around there again up here and we're just going to put on some where are you, you... all right let's grab some now this fan brush is dry got no water on it I didn't dip it in water thank you very much Laura Collins for your super chat donation I'm very much appreciated my sweetheart thank you so much for that now my rule of thumb is these bottom clouds here are always long and skinny little buggers okay they're stratus clouds all right they're always in the distance so we can just put something there just let them fade come down a bit lower and put something there maybe this one's a bit higher so it can be a bit fatter and just let him fade there like that okay done this one looks a bit crooked so I'll there we go now I'm going to grab the little blending brush watch what I do here leave the top leave the top and just blend the bottom down into the atmosphere up down to the horizon there okay boom give that a bit of a blend just so it looks nice see that's very easy it wasn't a very hard cloud let's get this one down into the atmosphere as well there we go and we'll do some more This is a painting channel, yes, it is about some coffee, mate. I can't read any comments there just yet. Now, I like to put something in the middle coming out, so we'll give it its bottom and give it a bit of body. Nice big cloud going into nothing there, just smashed all over the canvas like that. Uh, now, wipe your blending brush get the bum and sit the bum down into your paint there just like that boom wipe it again and give it some blending and turmoil the turmoil is what makes those clouds unique and look like nature okay I'm not pressing very soft I'm sort of feeling where I need to press I'm getting all sorts of um, lighter values and duller values within that cloud okay up here the top if anything can be blended to nothing up here if anything you want a bit of a base at the bums of them just so they look like they're coming over your head and get down there 
somewhere. Now I'm going to have a look in the monitor and just see how that's looking. Well, it's not too bad. It's not the best cloud I've done, but it'll do. I'll just see if there's something there. Hang on, I'm just going back here. Uh, uh, I'm Australia Day. New York, it's 12. Okay, not a problem. Now, I've got to clean the brush once you've done a um, cloud and if you're going to add more into the sky. So I'm just cleaning it, wiping it on the paper towel, picking up some more titanium white there. And we'll probably put one here and maybe something here. Come right off the painting there. Mm -mm. Okay, just like that. I'm going to use the bigger blending brush now. I'll get you over here a little bit more. Now, there's the bum there. Bit of a bum there. Bit of a bum there. Just get them flat. They're flat. Here we go, just like that. And now the top, lightly give it, sit it down into that blue paint. That blue paint is still very wet because of the retarder I've put in there. Grind that into there. Give it turmoil, all sorts of lighter and duller values. And this cloud here is a bit of a gap filler, so we're just going to let him go any old way. It's one of those ones that just look like cotton floating in the sky there. Okay, just like that. Pretty easy. Now that purpley colour we got there is pretty much <clears throat> the evening sky starting to happen. <coughs> Excuse me, where are we up to? Um, Bit of yumminess, so what I call the yumminess is just getting some more white on the smaller fan brush and cracking some brighter values within this duller stuff here. See, just like that. This is just to show you as an example. And just lightly, lightly, lightly sit that yumminess down into the cloud and it gives it that kind of 3D look. Okay. That'll do it. Don't want to get carried away there. Now, we'll pull this tape off so as we can get our mountains done now. Because if that tape wasn't there, all this, see that wet paint there? It's very hard to paint dry stuff on top of that, okay? That's why I've masked it off. And with your painting, you'll learn from trial and error. Okay. So I'm going to give that a bit of a dry. Just before I do, I'll just sit down any ridge of paint that might be sitting there. That's still very wet. Any ridges of paint there. Now I'm going to give that a bit of a dry. I've got to dry it. And um, see if I can read any. I just want to get this reasonably dry. Okay, just what's going on in the chat here? Is, some, is there something going on that I'm missing out on? Uh, I'm just going through here. Because it looks like uh, I'm just trying to see if there was something. I can't find anything just yet. Um, is someone in there that shouldn't be in there? Just let me know and I'll try and get to it. Otherwise, when I'm finished, I can delete all their stuff. Someone is sweet on Mona. Okay. All right, so what I'll do, I think it's that one there. I'll just, where are we? Uh, there we 
go. Okay. Well, the person that was sweet on Mona, I've just blocked from the channel. I can't stop painting to address idiots like that if they're going to be silly. I don't know. Either they are or they aren't. Okay. These things happen in lives. Now, we want to get some mountains here. I want to, I want to get this painting done as well. I don't want to take all day doing it as well. So I'm going to use good old burnt umber, just a simple burnt umber. And also I need some more titanium white. Yeah, it was a different font, some sort of different language font. Yeah, I don't know what the font was. All right, now I'm just gonna find a brush to paint these in with. And where do I wanna come down to? Probably to here first, and then I'll do that second bit and I'll slowly come forward to the painting. Now I've just got some water in a spray bottle here, just something to get that paint to transfer from the brush. I've just dampened the brush and dabbed it dry on my paper towel as well. Come down here and I want to just grab the good old burn umber, but before I do, I also want a bit of um, black. I've just got carbon black here. Any black will do, ink black. Um, not white, but black, black, all those sort of blacks you can use, okay? So we'll get the burn number. That's pretty much me, me, me rocks. These are like big rocks. Get that outside edge nice and sharp, okay? Sharp as you want. Nice. Now these aren't big massive mountains with snow on it, these are just rocks. So I'm going to try and shape them in a roundabout way without being too uniform. Pick up a bit more. Thank you, Krista C. Krista C likes the sky, so I... Now I'll get this bit here done to here. Now I've wet my brush because you want your paint to bugger off your brush and get onto that canvas there. You don't want it too wet though, you don't want to make your paint milky and weak. Now there's so many ways you can do rocks and mountains and cliffs and that. I'm sticking to something that works simple for me now and I'm going to show it to you in more detail with this painting is this burnt umber. Just simply mapping the rock in burnt umber. I need more on the on the palette here. Yeah, that sky, I'm just looking in the monitor there. That sky looks all right, I reckon. Yeah, quite happy with that. It's better than a poke in the eye with a blunt stick, isn't it? Now, once you've finished brushing, see I've brushed this on. Have pride in your work, all right? And brush stroke. Oh, the strokes out of it. So it looks nice. This is just that underlying bullshit effect. It just adds more clarity to your paintings. There we go. Now, dry it. It needs to be dry. If you don't dry it, you'll have trouble trying to get the other colours to stick there. Getting it dry, getting it dry. And then what I like to do is work out where I want the deep shadowy colours in this rock. There we go, that's, that's dry, that's dry. I hope you can hear me through all that. Now I'm just going to pick up the black here. I haven't washed the brush, it's just, it's got a little bit of the brown in it still, but we want some black. And I suppose 
we can get some black areas in here now. First, I'll just attack the bottom. Now, I want to get the black on there, okay, and scrumble it into this rock face here, whatever it is. Get some darker values in there, wherever you think darker values might be. There, pick up some more. I want the bottom dark, just because I do. Getting some darker values over there. Scrumble it in, you don't want any lined edges, you want any edges that look like lines scrumbled away. Okay, just get like that. See, I'm, I'm not really thinking, it's nothing hard to do, it's just knowing what to do. So scrumble your darker values within here. I'll come a bit closer over here. Some of the top there, a bit of a valley in there. Bit of something there. Sort of start shaping these rocks. These are rocks, okay? Rockety rock stuff. That's not a, they're not mountains, you know, like the ones you get in Alaska or Canada or wherever, which are full of snow. These aren't those sort of things, okay? Okay, I'm gonna wash this brush because I want to get another brush and some of the white. So I'll use another flat brush. I didn't clean him too well, did I? It's got a bit of paint on it. Get off there, you dog. There we go. That'll do. Now we've got our burn number. So grab a bit of white, not too much. Just mix up a a lighter value of some of that with the white. There we go. Not too much. Just work it out. Get a bit more. And look at your mountain rocks, stones, whatever they are there, and just see what um, what you want highlighted. Now, if this is too bright, I'll darken it up a little bit. Okay, so I probably want to get things in front and behind each other. So where can I start? I'll probably start over here. You don't want to edge. Wipe some of that off the brush. I want to scrumble this. Scrumble those edges with into that brown there, okay? I'll come over here, get something over here. Did I dry it? I can't remember. And we'll come over here. Scrumble all that down. Now I'm gonna, I will have to bring some of the um, darker brown back into it because it's might lose a bit of it and it's having the right amount of darks with the lights that help a painting so I'm getting it on there I'm not too worried how snotty it looks at the moment but I'm sort of getting these bits on there where I want them roughly and then I can de fine tune them with the darker color again just getting rid of all the scrumbly bits trying to make rocks out of them. Now I'm just getting a bit more that's a bit brighter, just to probably brighten some of that. Up here I sort of want some light, get a bit more brighter there. I sort of want some light hitting this. Come on. Bit more over here. Trying to push things back and forward from each other. All right. 
Now I'm going to clean that brush and I want to get some darker colours because now at the moment it's looking a bit... Where are you going with that kind of stuff? Now where are we sort of? Zigzag this just like so. Boom. Get one side of it, let's say this side. Uh, I'll try this side, just one side of it dark, just pulling away from one side creates a centre. There we go, just something like that. Oh, where are we? I'm losing where I'm up to here. A bit of dark here coming down. It's not dry, I, I, I'm, I'm, because I'm filming, I'm not too worried about drying it, but a lot of the time you might have to dry this stuff for it to work, to sit on top of the other colours there. Just something basic like that. Just scrumbling now, getting rid of some of the hard edges. Okay. Washing that brush. How long have I been going for? Half an hour. Getting some white and the um, burn umber, but a lot brighter value. And just Come now. Let's put that in front of there, okay? I hope, let me look in the monitor. Yeah, let's sort of put that in front there. We'll get this one kind of fading away there. Something on this ridge here. Just mucking with it a bit. And where are we? We'll get something coming over here, pushing that dark a bit. Get some, oh my goodness, I've got a big blob of black paint there that wasn't brushed in properly. Look at that. Not to worry. I'll just fingulate it and then get some of this on there. There we go. Just set it back. A lot of sauce for little spaghetti, all this backwards and forwards with different colours and stuff, but it's worth it because the painting's going to outlive you when it's finally done. So there's the reason why you don't ever want to rush a painting. Take your time with it and get it done. All right, that'll do. I can keep done with that till the cows come home. I'll, I'll leave that now. Because I'm probably... I'll, I'll grab my little scrambling brush, which is this one. I'm just... See if I can scramble some of those hard edges away, which I can't really. I'll, I can always go back to it if I feel I need to. Get your paint on there, Ian. There we go. That'll do it. It's a bit bright down there. All right. Now that's done, I'll give it a quick dry, I'll see if I can answer anything, if there's anything. Let's do this now. Here, we'll put this bit in. So I'm going to use just some black gesso for that. All right, so I'll grab a flat brush and dampen it down a bit. I'll grab some black gesso and we want to pretty much paint our scattered 
horizon line there. Get it all the way up to here. Okay, and block that in. Just remember, um, if you like any of my paintings, they're all available to buy. There's a link below to show you what's available. Oh, look at that, eh? There's a links in the description below that'll show you what's available to buy. And they're all done purchased through PayPal. Okay, let me get all of this nicely done there like so. And I've got to dry that now so everything's going to kind of stick. But before I do, where's me filbert? My lovely favourite filbert. Feel but feel but feel but I'm just going to add see here along this instead of it being flat I want to just add some bits of tree canopy there come off the painting bits up here come up there a little bit if you want just some tree canopy something over here something along there, just to break up that straight line, okay? Okay, there we go, not too bad. Bring it in there a bit. All right, I've got to dry that now. It's looking a bit dark, but don't worry. I'm gonna brighten it up. I'm just getting, there's some brush, the brush has left some blobs there, I've just flattened them out with my finger there. Well, now it's pulling the paint off. There we go. do with that brush there it is before I go too far further too far further I'll um I can get this done as well because it's going to have darker values in that water there so I can get that in I just got to remember where my lines are in my head where the horizon line will be in the rocks that'll do so that's why it pays to watch a video in its entirety if you're going to copy it or learn from it because you can work out what to do and what not to do. I'm painting on canvas cloth. It's just taped to my backing board which is painted black. Now I just want to grab some green, grass green is nice, okay, some green, I'm just grabbing some forest green there, and we'll grab some, let's say, what's this one here, I've got arillamide yellow, whatever yellow you want, I've just got arillamide down here on the palette. I'm just going to find that filbert brush wherever I put it, there it is, and clean it so as it's ready to do some beautiful foliage. So down here, I've just got the forest green. I'll pull part of it away and grab some of that arillamide just to turn the headlights on in a bit and get it on this brush, the sides I want it on. There we go. Just forest green and yellow, cadmium yellow or arillamide yellow you can use. I've just got arillamide because it's what I've got. Now, over here we're going to have our horizon somewhere here. 
and at the top of that rock, where's those trees there about there? So I want this kind of land here, just coming up there. So this is just for the tree sake. You probably can't see that pencil, I don't know. Um, now we'll get that dark that we put on there and just leave a lot of it there, put some tree canopies there. Leave some darks at the bottom where they're gonna meet the top of that cliff. When you watch the whole video in its entirety when you're learning from it, it puts in your mind what's getting painted. Because see, at the moment, I know what I'm painting, but you don't. But once you've watched the whole replay of the video, it gives you that knowledge of knowing what was in my head. Okay, so we'll get all this coming down here. Just something in front of the rocks and waterfall there. Something to break up the landscape. Oh, bits of Now these are either shrubs, trees, whatever you want them to be. They're just very artistic. They look alright for the painting, I reckon. Getting that there. Because there's obviously water in behind all that. Now I'll give that a little bit of a um, dry. It's important to keep drying every layer, okay? That way the other colours will stick. I'm going to grab a bit of the... Um, I'll wipe that brush first before I do. A bit of the, um, here it is here, the burn number that I still got, and some of that yellow, just to create a quick little dead undergrowth of some of that. Now wet the brush a bit so we get some good transferring. Uh, a bit more yellow maybe, a bit more. This is just the dead wood color within the trees before we highlight it with some yellow green and we can probably put a lot of this down the front here I don't know wherever you want bits of it within there some of it up here not everywhere just bits and pieces okay don't smother the whole lot with it how's that looking that's not too bad that's can get a bit of it jostling in there. Okay, I'll clean that brush. And I want a bit of, um, just a little bit of ground, ground before that, which is, here we go, raw sienna dark. So I'm gonna grab some of that. Just, I'll show you here. Get some of your white and the raw sienna dark. Oh, excuse me, bit of a burp there. Bit of green in there. And we'll get some of this just pushed into that dark there. This is just going to be the edge of those rocks where you can see some of the, the ground there. There we go. Now, I'll wash that brush. Now, because I wanted that done before I highlight it. So I'm washing that filbert. Now this yellow we had with the green, I want a lot of that now. So it's really a highlighted colour. There we go. We've got a yellow green. And before we do, just make sure this is all dry where you're going to put it again. Alright, that'll do, that'll do it. Now see, I want to bring some of this 
over that um, sandy dirt colour. So grab some of this and just let it sit it down a bit here and there. I've got to wet the brush a little bit more, not too much, just a, a bit. And also, I highlight this now, I'm creating the different depths within this foliage up here. You can see what it's doing. And that one we mix with the brown is creating that realistic look to you. Foley just got that dead underwood colour there. Just try not to get very patterny if you can. Dribble some of this highlight over the dark, it really makes it pop. Here we go, just something like that. <sighs> Where are we? Maybe a bit going on in here. There we go, not too bad, that'll do it. How's that looking? There you go, we've got some realistic type of um, ground cover there in front of those rocks and hills there. Now we've got to get the, what colour do I want to make that? I want the the burnt umber again. I'm using a lot of burnt umber, which is good. And we're going to make our rocks now. So we'll just grab another flat brush. I'm just going to use another flat brush here. Pick up some of this burnt umber. And it's up to you how much water you need to add into it, just so it's going to transfer nicely, okay? Now we've got the black up here. This line we put on, you want to sort of get over it a bit. <coughs> kind of like that. So, and what I mean by that is we're going to get over it there. Yeah, getting over it. Make it rocky. Bits of jaggedy bits like that. Because once this is all done in front of it, it's another element of bullshit. Of course, behind here is the actual water. We're not going to see the lake, but there's a lake there which is creating some type of waterfall. So we're getting that on top of that raw sienna dark that we put there with some white just to sink it back. There we go. And we want to paint all this in now. So just paint it with the um, burn umber. Leave some darker bits there. Mainly at the bottom where it's meeting the water which is going to be there later. So we've got all sorts of um, brush strokes in there. This is a very easy painting to do believe it or not. If you feel it's not that easy, Ian, well that's just your inner self saying it is easy but just get a bit more practice under your belt and you'll see just how easy it is. Okay, now we want this to be a different colour to those rocks up there. So we'll give that a bit of a dry. Now grab this colour here that you had, the um, raw sienna dark, and mix that into your brush and your burnt umber there. You're mixing that together. And now you're going to start shaping your rocks. If anything, I want them sort of coming from the top down. So let's say here and bits of rock coming down just like that.
there's all dark elements there. Now I don't want a bit too, I don't want a pattern going on there, I want to distort that pattern that's starting to develop and just change the way your brush is. Because if anything you want the bottom darker than the top area, okay? So we've got the brown on, we're putting this on and this is going to be gently highlighted here and there as well. Get some big other blobs of rocks there, this is all a rocky cliff face there. waterfall there so I'll leave a bit of dark there for it. Big bits of rock. This is probably a bit closer so we can have some bigger stuff there, I don't know. Now I'm just going to slightly scramble some of those edges just so it looks a bit more artistic and then we'll just gently highlight this okay so to highlight it that same color just grab the white over here grab some white of it and slowly mix it till you feel it's highlighted enough. You don't want it too bright though. I think that might do it a bit. <clears throat> and you don't want to highlight the living buggery out of it. So I'm going to go from that top and just kind of make rocks within here. Let me look into the monitor there. Not too bad. The water that's going to dribble off this, this is going to make it go all really, really nice. There's a lot of source in this painting. But at the end of the day, it's going to look nice hanging on your wall. Yeah, we can sort of see what's going on here. I'm just going anywhere willy-nilly. Now we've got all that burnt umber, this colour here, but what is missing just a little bit is um, black. So what I'm going to do is get some of the um, black on my brush and just look for bits that I want to blacken up. Just in there like this, just very gingerly twist some black in there like that. And you'll see what it does. Mainly from the bottom as well. Scrumble it, give it some scrumbling, not hard edges if you can help it. Ooh, my knee, I'm bending my knee the wrong way. Yeah, come on, get in there. That's it, a bit of dark. Need a bit of dark in your painting. There we go. Now, I won't put the waterfalls in it yet because I want them to drop onto the water down below. So we've got to get the lake in there now, and then we're finished. from the bottom, real dark from the bottom up. Get it up there, yeah, don't muck around. Don't be scared to tell your brushes you're the boss. See, I'm, look at me, I'm pushing that brush around. They'll last forever. When they run out, well, that's just time to get a new brush. But get it right up there. You're really, uh, uh, right up there, oh, yeah, get up there. There you go. 
That's enough, that's enough. Now I'm gonna put the water on there later. That's gonna bring it home. I will, while I've got this brush, just grab a bit of yellow, because I'm a bit, um, oh, wrong yellow. I'm a bit not happy with the green sitting on top there. I need a, just some little pockets of yellow as well, or really the most brightest yellow green. So I'm gonna use this brush and get some of this really yellowy flavor just to pop there. Okay, so get some of this. Hopefully this brush is gonna do it. Just along here we want some, <coughs> let me rest me on. Got to rest me on, just some real hairy yellow bits here. Some in front, just sitting it down there. Let me look in the monitor and see if that's doing anything. Yeah, not too bad. It's up to you if you want to add these or not. Just something to break up that. Band, looks a bit bandy. Yeah, that's all right. You squint your eyes and look at that, it just looks so much different. <sighs> right, now we want some water. So what color can we do the water? Um, geez, I don't know. Thank you very much, Yamaha, for your super chat donation there. Much appreciated. Cyber hugs and kisses to you, sweetheart. Um, water, water, water. I might get a little bit of um, blue. Where are we? I'm probably going to use a bit of um, phalo blue here. I've just got some phalo blue there. Um, a little bit of retarda. I better show you what I'm doing there. A little bit of retarda. And um, I've got white, I've got white. I'll grab some more white there as well. Where's the white? I want the craft white. Oh, come on, don't have a hard day on me. There we go, just enough to turn the lights on. Now I want a bigger brush. And I wanna make the water coming from here towards us, okay? So we've got our phalo blue. I'm just going to quickly see what it looks like on there yet. And I'm going to mix a bit of brown with it. I don't know if that's a good marriage or not, but it's the flavour I want anyway, because I'm the one painting this painting and it's what I want in it. And then when you put a bit of white in there, it's going to turn the headlights on. Okay, so this has got retarder in it. Why'd you put retarder in that bit, Ian, and not all those rocks and stuff? Because this paint here, I want to make merge and blend and look greatly great with some, like, wet, moisty, mergy colours like water would have. So we're coming about here. Boom, buddy, boom, boom. It's up to you how you have your water. I just wanted it a bit of a staggered waterline okay so let's say about there and about there okay now block all this in before it dries on you this paint here is phalo blue with some of that burnt umber mixed with it come on get it right in there yeah come on get it in there that's it yeah right in there <coughs> there you go now we're going to add a little bit of white, not too much. Let's grab some white here, pull it out. Oh, we've got a bit of turquoise characters going there. Now, there's going to be waterfalls there, so let's make sure. Mm, which way can, should I do it? I might just put, I'll have something there, so I'll some of this going roughly where you want your waterfalls like that all 
All right, wipe the brush like a gentleman. Just wipe it, wipe it. Same brush. And we'll just easily duvelate that backwards and forwards. That's looking all right. Now we'll pick up some more of that white and we might put some of it here, band of it there, and probably, I don't know, a band of it there. Just stick it on there like that. <clears throat> wipe your brush, same brush. Okay, and get that pushed within the water. That's why I put the retarder in that bottom bit. We'll see how it's allowing all this to do all that. It's just glares there, that's all it is. There we go. Now, give it a bit of a, uh, hang on a minute before we do give it a bit of a, We'll grab a bit of um, black, I'm just grabbing some black down here. Bear with me a moment. Now this is the black out of the tube. It's not gesso black, 60 minutes an hour already. Golly. Now we're just gonna quickly dry that. I'll just do some in this bottom corner here. Get some black, because I want some Where are we? Just some darkness here if I can get it. Just some darkness here and I can rock it up later. Okay, a little bit of white on there, not too much. <laughs> Let me see if it's gonna work. I hate doing these rocks, I don't know why I do them. No, a little bit more white. Now make your rocks, just make them out of the white. You've put the black on there. Bits of blue are mixing with it, don't worry. That's it. That bright one looks a bit deculated. I'll get rid of that. There we go. There you go few rocks there. Yeah, right. Now let's bring this baby home to mama and papa. All right. We've got it pretty much done. Now where I put the reflections in the water, that's where we pretty much want our um, waterfall. Okay. So I'm going to grab some good quality titanium white out of the tube. And I do want to dry the water where it's going to hit because I don't want to contaminate it. Okay. I'm sorry I haven't been able to read many of your comments there, but now what are we going to do here? Uh, just put a couple of waterfalls down there, bro. So what we'll do, we'll get something, where well, we've got something here. Now work out, I want that one to stop about there, there, and there. That's where they're going to stop. They're going to stop in the water, not at the water, okay? So we just got it straight out of the tube. You can put, if you want, little bits of white up here, just like this. Little bits of white. Okay, what's that for, Ian? I'll tell you in a minute. So you're just up there like that. This is just bodies of water sitting there and it hasn't quite fallen over the edge, but some of them might. Now we'll get these waterfalls. So we'll put one here. Oh, damn, get them straight too. Just get it to those lines you put there. I've got to get this very straight in. So we'll put one there. Oh, we'll make a thin one here. Bits of thin ones are good too. And a bit of a medium one there. Okay, how's that looking? Not too bad, not too bad. See, I don't want them all the same thickness. OK, 
okay? And I also want to get some kind of just oozing down here. Just something like that. How's that looking? That's not too bad. And we'll get a little bit just sort of dribbling down here like, I don't know, he could be squirting out. See, they're hitting stuff. How's that looking? Yeah, that's all right, that's all right. Now what you want to do, just use the same brush, I suppose, and you can create a little bit of, not too much, don't overdo it. A little bit of turmoil coming up the water tubes there. A bit there, a bit there, yeah. Whack your kettle on if you're having a good time painting. It's the best thing you can do when you're painting is just whack that bloody kettle on. Now, what do we got? What I'm going to do, oh, my head's fairly in the way. I've got the paint on my brush and I've wiped it off and I want to kind of, that reflection, we've kind of lost it. So we're going to lightly, if I can, get some of them back. Just so as they look real, given depth to your painting. There's bugger all on my brush. Yeah, yeah. How's that looking? Yeah, that's all right. Now, I just want to finish it off. Some of the water I've got white paint I've been using and I've tainted it with the blue so it's tainted all right got my paintbrush nicely chiseled and pointed and I just want to roughly very gingerly and skinningly put water movement where it's hitting against the the rock there This is just sitting everything in perspective with each other, okay? Little bit there, little bit there. And you can also use this to sink some of your reflections down. All right. So don't forget Check the links in the description below. If you want to own one of my paintings, you message me on Facebook, all the links are there. That'll do, stop it in, you're gonna get carried away there. All right, now I'm going to grab my liner brush and I just wanna grab that paint that I use there and just put my Distinctive autograph down here. Where's the corner of it? There it is there. And if you're not a member of my art group, go to the link below. Request to become a member. Answer the free questions. And share all your art there with me and everybody else. It's a great community. Oh my goodness, this is the first time my signature has worked so neatly with that little brush. Normally it looks ugly. There you go, got Steve's little footprint down there, all the way like that. And now we'll whack a frame on it and just see how she looks. So, hang on, we'll, um, where are we? Get this back a bit. Just so as we can see how it's going to look in a frame. Watch what the frames do with the inner white border. Whack a frame on there like that. There we go. That's not too shabby, eh? We've got a beautiful dark lake. We've got some rocks. Our cool sky, some other hills there coming forward to these waterfalls here. There's so much more you can do with that. All right, and just remember, you can do that, okay? <clears throat> you 
Jerry, awesome, Ian. You're really showing us a lot. Thank you very much, Jerry. Celeste Watson, thank you. May Aurora, thank you, Aurora. Glitter, glitter coffee, get a glitter coffee. And Bev French, Laura Collins, thank you, Laura Collins. All right, I'll pull myself back a bit. Okay. Uh, this went over an hour a bit. I, I, I normally try to get me live tutorials under an hour because, um, yeah, that's just the way I like to do them. So, okay, just remember, if you like what I'm doing, you tell your friends. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, all right? All the best. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you. Woo-hoo. Okay. Now I've got to write all oh, them paint colours. How many are there? One, two, three. Ten of the bastards. Oh, where's that? I've got to go and whack that kettle on. Get my glasses there. Right, I could take that frame back off and put it back to front so I don't get paint on my curtain. All right, take a photo of it. That's all right, that'll do. I can detail that probably a little bit more. Good night, Celeste. Krista, good night. Have a great day. Thank you for watching, all right? I'd better go behind the camera and say it's Uru from The Guru.